Pirates, it is time for our monthly visit with our good friend, Meathead Goldwyn. I like to call him the Grand Poobah of the Grill. He is also <laughs> a, a Hall of Famer, and uh, also he's got uh, rubs and sauces that are officially out now. We can talk about those as well. And Meathead, it is uh, always good to see you, my friend. Always good to see you, too. Uh, I, I'm psyched because just around the corner is my favorite holiday of the year. It's the one holiday built around food. And, and, you know, just to, to be a little philosophical for a moment, when you think about it, no matter how divided we are as a society, politically, racially, ethnically, gender, most of us sit down on Thanksgiving and eat the same meal. Yeah, like one giant table across the country, turkey, cranberry sauce, stuffing, sweet potatoes. I mean, that's just... Uh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. We're laughing here because my camera just went haywire. <laughs> the best view we've had all the, the whole times we've had all of our visits. That's the best view we've had. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, it's, it's just a holiday that, you know, we can all sort of hold hands across the country and enjoy together as one unit. And there's nothing like it anywhere else in the world. No, no other country that I'm aware of has a holiday where they all eat the same meal. They all celebrate the same thing. I just think it's wonderful. And every year, it seems like every year we end up delving into spatchcocking. I know we're, I, uh -huh. that's not something that we've mentioned yet uh, that we're going to talk about. I know we're going to talk turkey and stuffing and yeah, yeah. how to avoid dry turkey uh, inside or outside. Well, you know, that's that's the bane of Thanksgiving is we do all eat the same meal and we all suffer through dry turkey. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be. The problem is, is that you're, you're supposed to cook turkey to 165 degrees internal temperature, which is way up there in the well done range. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in most of us will eat a steak in the medium rare range, which is 130 to 135. That's 30 degrees less and it's nice and tender and juicy. Mm -hmm. We don't like turkey at that temperature. It's kind of stringy and, you know, a little slimy. But, and also there's a safety risk. So we cook it up to 160. What USDA says 165, 160 will do because when you take it off, it continues to cook because there's heat built up in it. Now we do talk about spatchcock because the core concept here is, is that turkey is at least 75% water. And, right. and all meats are. And as you heat them, the hotter you heat them, the more water evaporates and escapes. So you end up with dry. So the key here is, is to cook it at a low temperature and get it done as quickly as you can. And if you take a turkey and you leave it whole, like Norman Rockwell turkey, and you put the stuffing in the center, you've made this giant bowling ball. And it has to be 160, 165 in the center to be safe. And that means the center of the stuffing. So you need a really good digital thermometer. The pop-up thermometers you can't trust. You can get a really good digital thermometer for 30 bucks. Um, uh, they should be in your grocery or your hardware store. Those dial thermometers you can't trust. Um, if you want a good buying guide, amazingribs.com, my website has a good buying guide to thermometers. We don't sell any of them, we just recommend them. Um, and, and you really want to, for things like turkey and chicken, you got to get it right. You overcook it and it's going to be um, it, it, it's cardboard. So yeah. um, we like to spatchcock it, which is a, a, a kind of naughty sounding word for butterflying it. You cut the backbone out and you spread it out so it lays flat and therefore it's thinner and it, it's not as thick as cooking a whole big ball, especially stuffed. So you aren't going to cook the stuffing in the bird. It's safer that way to take the stuffing out of the bird. But I have a plan for that stuffing that you're going to love. Um, I like to cook the bird over a drip pan. I get a big old baking pan, put it, over, put it underneath the bird. And in there, I like to put some carrots, some um, celery, some apples, um, uh, I, I cut out the neck and uh, all the excess skin from the front cavity, the rear cavity, um, uh, all, the, all, the, all the stuff that comes in the bag, except the liver. Don't put the liver in there. All that stuff goes in the pan and you fill the pan with water or chicken stock and maybe a little wine or something. And what you're doing is, is as the bird is roasting, you're making a soup 
a chick, a, a turkey stock, a turkey soup that is wonderful, really flavorful. The, the drippings from the bird get in there. And then when the bird is just about done, before it's done, you pull that out and you strain it. And now you have this marvelous stock, which is the base for your gravy. If you want to add flour and make a thick gravy, you can, but you don't need to. It's really good thin like this. And I just drink it by the cup at the day after Thanksgiving. There's just a bunch of it left over, but we're going to use that to make our stuffing or as the purists will say it's a dressing it's not a stuffing if it's not in the bird uh, but regardless i call them muffings because i take the stuffing now you mix in a little egg the ratio is two eggs for one pound of dry bread two eggs to one pound of dry bread you mix it in use your regular stuffing mix if you want a good stuffing mix Go to my recipe on amazingribs.com for the muffins. Just enter muffins in this in the search box. And I have the whole recipe in the process. But you want to dry the bread and you can dry it in the toaster, which gives it some extra flavor or throw it on the grill and get some grill flavor on it. Um, and you make your stuffing with these eggs and you put them in muffin tins, just like you would make muffins. And when the, the, the egg make, works like a binder and it doesn't, this, it doesn't make an odd flavor to it. And that way, everybody gets this muffin of stuffing. Everybody gets exactly the same. And, you know, everybody wants to crunch the exterior bits. Well, everybody's got one. You know, you got the, the muffin tops. Remember Seinfeld with the right. muffin tops? <laughs> <laughs> stuffing muffin tops, man, they're great. Um, and so everybody gets a stuffing muffin on the side. And there's this marvelous gravy, which you can use in, in preparing the muffins. It's just absolutely a great way to do stuffing. And to speed along cooking of the bird. Now, if you've got a huge crowd coming over, it's much better to get two small birds than one big bird. The really big birds are older and the meat is tougher. And again, it's thicker. The breasts are really thick. They take longer to cook. It's gonna dry out the exterior. So get two smaller birds, they'll cook faster and you'll have more juicy, more tender, um, a better turkey. Now I'm not the smartest, but you talk about putting the the tray under your turkey on on a grill like mine. It, are you talking about putting the turkey up on the on the top rack and then putting the the tray underneath that? Is that what you're talking about? Well, it, it depends. Every every grill is going to be different, and you can do this indoors too. By the way, you can spatchcock the bird and lay it on top of a rack, right in the um in in the uh, in the in, in the kitchen, and you put the the pan. It's like um, uh, you get the biggest roasting pan you've got and put it underneath the bird. Um, so on your grill, you would put it under the cooking grate if you can fit it under there, or you put it on top of the cooking grate. And then you just, I go into the kitchen, take one of the racks out of the stove and lay it on top of that grate. Um, so uh, you just want to put it above the pan. And by the way, those roasting pans that have the V-shaped rack, when you mm. put the bird in there, the, the part of the bird that is below the top of the pan is not gonna get as much warm air and it's gonna cook at a different rate. And that's why the underside of your turkey is always um, tan and soggy and undercooked. You wanna lift the bird above. Those V-shaped racks are garbage. Um, <laughs> put it on top of the, put it above the, the drip pan so that the air can circulate all around and cook all the bird. That's and that's something I've always wondered about too. I'm, I, I've got to be extremely careful about the turkey anyway because of the dryness and ulcer. Uh, it, it just absolutely tears my ulcer up. So, uh, but the, so you're saying take it completely out of the V rack and just put it on a on a regular rack. Some hover it above the rack so that warm air circulates all around, and you can figure out how you, whether you're cooking it indoors or outdoors. Just hover it above the ra above the pan. Put the put the put put all the fixings for the gravy in the pan, and catch the drippings. But if it's hovering above, then it's going to get warm air circulating all around. It's going to cook faster, and you won't have that soggy underside. Now, what do you like to pair with uh, your Thanksgiving meal as well, uh, aside from the uh, the the the, the muffins? <laughs> what other I, what other specific sides do you like? I go traditional, man. I mean, I'm, I, I just absolutely, all year round, I love uh, sweet potatoes. Um, of course, I go to my brother-in-law's house and he has three daughters. They're all now in their 40s and they have three or four kids each. And my wife and I, and we all shop. So everybody brings a dish. So I just eat whatever's put in front of me. One <laughs> of them makes this great 
um, uh, 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 corn casserole, which is fantastic. I've got to get that recipe from her. Um, sweet potatoes, not real big on the marshmallows and the sweet potatoes. I've kind of outgrown my sweet tooth, you know, but I do like sweet potatoes. And if you want to put a little of uh, maple syrup or honey on there, I won't complain. Um, cranberry sauce. My wife makes a cranberry sauce with Italian pears, not Italian pears, Asian pears, Asian mm -hmm. pears and some grated um, orange zest. And um, uh, there's a, um, there's a recipe for um, uh, cranberries out there that has horseradish in it. It's called Mama Stamberg's, Mama Stamberg's, S-T-A-M-B-E-R-G, Mama Stamberg's um, uh, cranberry sauce. It comes out kind of pink and creamy, but it's really good with the horseradish. Just wow. Google Mama Stamberg's um, uh, uh, cranberry sauce. Um, you know, green beans. I do green beans. Uh, I, I learned a technique when I went to France um, where they quickly parboil them so they're mostly cooked. Then they throw them in a frying pan with some duck fat. Duck fat's really flavorful. Um, mm -hmm. And um, they, they scorch it so it gets a little brown on the outside. And then they throw in a handful of breadcrumbs and the breadcrumbs stick to the, um, to the green beans. And so you have kind of crunchy, um, uh, scalded, uh, tender and juicy um, uh, green beans. I really like them that way too. I, I It's just a feast, man. I eat whatever. They, what do you do? What do you guys serve? You have it at your house? We do. We, uh, we, my daughter is the turkey fan. Uh, uh -huh. and because of my, my ulcer, I, I make a, a small turkey for her. Then I usually do a spiral cut ham is what I do. It's, it's safe on me. Yeah, that's, you know, a lot of people do. I, I made this shtick about everybody eats turkey, but a lot of people do ham for, uh, uh, for Thanksgiving. By the way, I just finished a, um, an ebook on turkey. Um, mm -hmm. It's on Amazon for three dollars and ninety nine cents, and it's an ebook. You download it from Amazon. It's a Kindle book, and um, you can. Uh, it has um, how to deep fry turkey. It has this recipe that I just talked about: spatchcock with the gravy. Um, it has Walt Disney turkey legs. If you ever been to Disney World, you see these people walking around. They look like uh, dinosaur legs. They're just huge <laughs> turkey legs and they're, they're, they're cured in smoke. They have a really special flavor. I know how to do it. And the recipe for that's in there. So all, everything you ever need to know about Turkey in this little 399 ebook. And if you want to get one and you don't want to spend 399, you can order one of my company's new sauces and rubs, and you'll get one for, you'll get the ebook for free. Yeah. And tell us, tell our listeners a little bit about the, uh, the new, let me see. I want to make sure I get this right. Uh, the meatheads, amazing seasonings and dry brine or the amazing <laughs> good enough to drink Casey salad barbecue sauce. And you take that? good notes. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> we, we, we put out three rubs um, and, and there's a poultry rub in there and it's really good on Turkey. Um, and uh, there's a pork rub. And then there's a red meat rub. And I'll tell you, I have all my life been a salt and pepper guy on steaks, never a sauce, never anything else. And this red meat rub is just awesome on steak. And um, uh, my wife won't let me cook a steak without it or a burger. It's just fantastic. There's a pork rub in there that you absolutely need for doing ribs and such. And then we did a Kansas City style uh, a, a great sweet red smoky and it's got a little secret ingredient that I can't tell you about uh, but it's really nice and I've had a number of people tell me it's the best barbecue sauce they've ever had they're just came on the market so they're only available on our website now but they will be in stores by spring hopefully and uh, if you want to try them they're on my website and if you buy them there's a little QR code that will let you get um, a free ebook cookbook and there's four of them to choose from, but Turkey is one of them. Yeah. How about that? Now, now, how many years have you been delving into the science on Turkey? I mean, uh, was, was Turkey one of the early ones that you really delved yeah. into? Yeah. I launched the website in 2005 with just ribs. You know, that's how we got the name Amazing Ribs. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I, 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 I've, I've been a cook all my life. My dad had a restaurant for a while. Uh, a great story behind that. In Sarasota, Florida, he opened a restaurant, he bought a restaurant named Oleander. 
And it was only after the restaurant failed that we realized that oleander is a poisonous plant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's where my cooking career starts with poisonous <laughs> plants. Uh, but I, you know, I mean, like everybody else, I just really I I, I like the taste of turkey and all the. The, the stuff that goes with it. And certainly I love turkey sandwiches and turkey pot pie and stuff the day after. But um, turkey was one of the very first recipes I started experimenting with because I just wanted to make a great turkey. And if you do this gravy in the drip pan underneath and don't thicken it with flour, if you thicken it with flour, it just kind of sits on top of the meat. But if you don't thicken it and you drizzle it on top of the meat, it will it will penetrate. It will soak into the meat and it'll moisturize the meat, even if it's been overcooked. And it just has a, a wallop of flavor. And I explain in detail both on AmazingRibs.com and in this e-cookbook um, how to get that right. It's And it really makes a huge difference. And obviously, we always talk about the grilling, but uh, what is one of your favorite post-Thanksgiving uh, turkey repurposes, if you will? Well, I'm there at pot pie. Um, I, I mean, I, I, you know, chicken pot pie, of course, and you, why not turkey pot pie? Um, and uh, they're really simple. You can, of course, buy um, pie shell pre-cooked or, or pre, pre, pre-made, prefabricated, right. got to be baked, or you can make your own pie shell. Um, and then, you know, in goes the turkey and then you use the gravy to make the sauce that goes in there uh, with some, you know, peas and carrots and whatever else you want to toss in there. And that, that's absolutely wonderful. And with the smoked turkey, you know, smoke and turkey absolutely love each other. But you got to be careful if you're going to cook it outdoors or on a smoker, don't go crazy with the smoke. Too much smoke on turkey overwhelms it. I just go light on the smoke. You can do it on a grill, a gas grill or a charcoal grill. Um, put it on the indirect heat side, not directly above the flame, away from the flame, and then you can throw wood on top of the flame and get some smoke circulating, just, you know, a, a handful or two of wood, and that's all it needs. Um, well, I mean, you've had, well, everybody's had smoked turkey, uh, even in the deli counters, and it goes great in those pot pies. And of course, sandwiches, um, dried turkey, I mean, leftover turkey sandwich with a little cranberry sauce on the sandwich. Oh, my, that's good stuff. And getting some ambiance there too. Yeah, you heard that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, where, wherever you live, there's they, choose your noise. My wife says, you know, you wherever you live, you get airplanes, you get trains, you get sirens. <sighs> now we we we've talked Thanksgiving, we've talked post Thanksgiving. What is the biggest holiday uh, engorgement that you look forward to uh, is, are there any, uh, candies, uh, as we get closer to Christmas, any of those kind of goodies you really look forward well, to as, you know, as we're getting into November, we do have some food traditions in this country. Of course, Turkey is Thanksgiving, um, Christmas. A lot of people do Turkey, or of course there's the Christmas goose. That's not hugely popular in this country, but it is very popular in England. Um, uh, uh, or in Europe, geese are very popular over there. Um, uh, but a lot of people will do a ham. Um, or in my case, we have a tradition of a uh, rib roast, a beef rib roast. You know, it, it sets you back a month's pay, but you get a big old huge beef rib roast, and that's so festive. Uh, you can do it with a tenderloin or a filet mignon. Um, and then, you know, Easter, a lot of people do ham for Easter, um, and that's your traditional Easter, but spring lamb is also really popular. So we have, and then of course, 4th of July for me is a ribs holiday. You got to have ribs on the 4th of July. Um, I saw, we do have these holidays and they're, they're traditions, but none of them is quite so prescribed as Thanksgiving with turkey. That's right. And uh, Meathead, always want to make sure and uh, and let folks know if they want to find more info uh, about the rubs, about the sauce, about any of the recipes we've talked about. Uh, where's the best place for, for folks to do all that? Amazingribs.com is our website. There's 2,000 pages of website that are free. Um, if you really are deep into it and you want to join our Pitmaster Club, there's a lot of cool benefits to that. I have a book on the market. It should be in almost any bookstore called Meathead, the and uh, there's uh, uh, four ebooks on Amazon. 
um, just search for my my name, Meathead. And, uh, there's one on ribs, chicken, sous vide to the um, sous vide Q, sous vide to the grill, and then now turkey. And we'll have more as they as time goes by. All right. Well, Meathead, always great to visit with you. I'm so excited. The uh, the rubs and the sauces are out. That's good stuff. Yeah, they are, and uh, uh, the, the, you can expect a Christmas package. <laughs> <laughs> I will accept it. I will accept that. <laughs> well, Meathead, always good to visit with you, sir, and uh, look forward to catching up again next month. Always fun to talk to you. I love talking to people who love food.